up YouTube fam and welcome back to Dr. Cellini's channel. Today we are doing another question and answer type video because the last time we did one back in March, you all loved it and have been sending us questions ever since. So we figured we'd try to answer as many as we can in this video. So let's get to it. Let's go. Let's get into question number one, and it's for Dr. Cellini. When did you know you wanted to be a radiologist? Did you have any other specialties in mind? I knew I wanted to be a radiologist after doing a rotation at the end of my third year of medical school. I kind of fell into the rotation and I did it to replace something that fell through and ended up absolutely loving it, which is why I did radiology. So it was kind of late in the game. I did it at the end of my third year, like I said, and once I had that rotation, I was all forward to radiology. And what was the other part? Um, did you have any other specialties in mind prior? Up until that point, I wanted to do urology, believe it or not, because I realized later on it was very procedural oriented and I love procedures and that's what drew me to urology. So fun fact, I wanted to be a urologist first until I discovered radiology. Dr. Cellini, the urologist. <laughs> Almost urologist. All right, let me see the next one. All right, this is for Andriana. What is your favorite place to shop? Okay, this is not medically related, but my uh, three favorite places are Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, and Zara. If I have to um, do just solely online shopping, I'll get a few pieces from Revolve, but in store, those three are my pla favorite places. Yeah, I think she pretty much likes to shop at any store that has shopping. That's also true. So, just, yeah. Alrighty, question number three. If you could, would you go back and pick a different specialty? No, is the short answer. I absolutely love radiology and I've loved it since I chose it at the end of my third year and I've loved every bit of residency. As hard as it is, I could not imagine doing another field. So the answer is a strong no. This is the best field of medicine, non-biased. Of course. I have to say, he never, ever goes into work unhappy. He always leaves the door excited to go into work. So that tells you something. Yeah, I mean, I've, it's been five years now and I've, I mean, it's residency, but I've never had a problem no, with it. No, he never complained never. or woke up like, oh, I have to go into work. Yeah. So. Not like they used to do back in business. Yeah. That, that was, <laughs> those days were terrible. All right, question number four. Yes. Four? Four? Yeah. How did you two meet? By the way, Andriana is absolutely stunning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but um, let's see, how do we meet? So I was a surgery PA and Michael was doing his intern year in the surgery department. Mm -hmm. So um, we ended up being on a team together and the rest was history. Um, sounds pretty yeah. cliche, but it works for us. Just because you're in medicine doesn't mean that that's what your life revolves around. It definitely makes it super nice to have that convenience, but um, it works for us. Yeah, I think we touched on it a little bit in the last video we did. We did ask this question a lot, but yeah, we met in the hospital, in the hallways of the ICU, the surgical ICU, and I knew- Super romantic. Yeah, I knew she was gonna be the one, and it worked out, obviously. All right, question number six. Hey, Dr. Cellini, how often as a radiologist do you write prescriptions? Rarely is the short answer. Um, we don't write prescriptions. I don't think I've ever written a prescription in radiology, diagnostic radiology, but in interventional radiology, which is what I'm doing, we write prescriptions all the time and send them to pharmacies as well. Post-procedural probably, yeah, right? Yeah, it's usually, so for any like, fibroid or uterine artery embolization or hepatic tumor embolization, we will send them home with antibiotics as well as pain medicine to control the pain because it can be pretty painful when you embolize an organ, as you can imagine. So that's pretty much it. And some random Zofran as well sometimes. All right, so this is question number seven for Andriana. Was it difficult to get a PA job right after graduation? And are urgent care and emergency medicine specialty is difficult to pursue fresh out of PA school. So we'll start with the first one. So I didn't have a 
problem getting a job after school. I was also in New York City and there are tons of available PA positions in various different specialties. Although I do think it's really city dependent. In some areas it could be more saturated than others. Um, definitely in rural areas you'll definitely get a lot more job, job opportunities. Yeah. Um, but recently I've had or I've heard mixed reviews on new, on new grads getting positions. A lot of places want experience but that's when um, you know, any opportunity that you get, you take it until you get your experience and then move on. Yeah, I think it's entirely city dependent and how saturated the market is. Sometimes in bigger cities, it may be oversaturated and other times in other cities, it may be undersaturated and you have like a million jobs to choose from. It also depends on if the state is very PA friendly or not, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. um, I've always worked in areas where it's super PA friendly, so I never had a, um, I never had difficulty finding a job. All right, so the second part of that question is, are urgent care and emergency medicine specialties difficult to pursue as a fresh PA right out of school? So I could answer the urgent care portion. Um, I was not a new grad. I had derm and surgery experience prior, but I can see as a new grad, it can be definitely overwhelming in an urgent care setting if you're a solo provider, which my urgent care is. Um, however, in the ER, you do have more of a support system, so that could just be less overwhelming and you have kind of a backbone there too and more support. So yeah, it can be tough as a PA working in a solo provider role directly out of PA school, much like, I mean, when I graduate uh, residency, it, it would be very hard for me to just go open a practice by myself and be by myself. In a difficult, difficult specialty like IR, I would want some sort of like senior faculty to help me on my uh, early junior attending role. Question number eight is for Dr. Cellini. Is it difficult to match into interventional radiology? I heard it was the most competitive residency to match into. Yes, the rumors are true. Interventional radiology is the toughest specialty to match into according to like the last two years of uh, match data. Why is it so difficult? I think because there are so few spots and it's very like in vogue right now, if you will. So for that reason, it makes it competitive. I think when med students find out about how awesome the specialty is and there's so few spots it makes it super competitive so yeah pretty much every med student who comes in that i interview for interventional radiology positions has ample research crazy letters of rec and amazing board scores they're like a total package now so it's very competitive all right so question number nine i believe now is baby anytime soon question mark in short no um, not anytime soon. I mean, no. maybe, God willing, one yeah. day, but not anytime soon. Yeah, not anytime soon. We want to finish our training first and, you know. Mike, we, I, I want Michael to finish his yeah, training I, first. And I want to finish my training first <laughs> before I have a little one. Um, it'll just make things a lot easier. Although I know there's like no good time to have a kid, so it. Yeah, are like, you even prepared? Are you ever prepared? No, you're never prepared. prepared. So prepared. whatever happens, happens, but we're not going to. You know. We're not actively trying to have a child. Yeah, we're not actively trying right now. Let's just put it that way. So question number 10 I think we're on now is, are you guys from Croatia? Dr. Cellini, are you Croatian? <laughs> no, I'm not Croatian, even though a lot of people think I am. I'm actually Italian, but she is Croatian. Yes, my parents were born there. I was born here, so I'm first generation. Um, so yeah, very everyone, no one thinks that I'm Croatian. Yeah, he no, looks more Croatian than me. 100%. Anytime we go to Croatia, which we try to do every year, they always think I'm Croatian and speak Croatian to me, but I don't really understand them. I mean, he knows a little bit, yeah. but not really much. But she speaks Croatian and went to Croatian school growing up and is Croatian. Next question. What unit in the hospital is best for new doctors to start on? What jobs did you start at to see if a medical career is right for you? All right, so those are kind of two different questions, but I think the first one is what unit should you start on as a new doctor? And when you say new doctor, I'm assuming you mean like a, an intern or a resident. And if that's the case, I think the first rotation that I would feel comfortable starting on and what I did start on is somewhere on the floor. So I think being on a floor monitoring and taking care of non-critical patients would probably be the best place to start. Like I did my intern year. I actually started in the ICU, but it was so quick. And then I went to managing patients on the floor. And that's where you kind of really get into the whole vibe of managing patients and managing their daily routine and 
all that stuff. So I think that's the best place to start. So Agreed. what was the other question? So the next part of this question is what jobs should you start at to see if a medical career is right for you? And I think we did an entire video on that. It's like the four tips for pre-meds or something. And what jobs we did prior to starting PA and, and med, med school. school. So I'll link that down here or up here. It'll be in my description somewhere. So yeah, basically it just goes into like shadowing different uh, people and all that stuff. Yep. So that's a good video to watch for that question. So the next question is, is it possible for a PA to do one specialty the first half of a week and then do another specialty for the second half of the week? Yes, I actually did that. I was a part-time derm PA and a full-time surgery PA. So I did three 12s for my surgery job and then my part-time derm job, I did two days a week. Yeah, so when I first met her, she's always like a workaholic, so she always works two jobs for some reason. So she'll do full-time surgery and then was it part-time? Yeah, part-time derm. I worked every Saturday and Monday in derm. Yeah. Now I'm just full-time urgent care. Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of being a PA because you can almost work, you could, could you work two full-time jobs? If you wanted to, yeah. Yeah, you could work two full-time jobs. If, if you really loved working like she does, you could you could definitely swing that. Next question. How do y'all keep the spark alive having such busy schedules? Do you want to answer? Yeah, so I actually have to work every other weekend. So on the weekends that we both have off, we always go somewhere. That always. is our favorite thing to do. I mean, sometimes we'll have a weekend off where we just want to lay low key but we'll always go somewhere and then for the weekends that i do work um we'll always go out for dinner at least once a week yeah i think it's important to kind of not get in the routine of just coming home and going to sleep or coming home watching tv going to sleep i think you need to like stay moving right i mean for the days where i don't have my long shifts we always have dinner together dinner yeah. is a must always but yeah we anytime we have a weekend off which is rare we are always getting out of town, going somewhere, whether it be... Visiting know, our family. Yeah, um, whatever. Any, anywhere we can, we just go. Yeah. That's, that's our motto. Just leave whenever you have time. And the last question is, was it worth it? Meaning all the time and effort, schooling, money, sacrifice, sweat, and tears. Would you do anything different? Um, no. So I don't think I would do anything differently other than starting med school earlier. That, he has a video actually where he was actually yeah. in a totally different career. Right. I, I did a whole video. It was called My Unusual Path to Med School. I think I'll link up here. Or down here. Or put a link <laughs> in the description. Um, but yeah, I was in a, a different field. I worked in business before I went to med school. And I have never looked back at all. I think it was like the best decision I ever made personally. And I mean, I don't think I would be where I am today without going to med school. And I mean, it's hard. Yeah, med school, residency, it's hard. It's 14 years of training. And I mean, it's not for everybody, but for personally for me, I it's, it's the best decision I ever made and I've never regretted it once. What about you? I, if I didn't do medicine at all, I would maybe do something in fashion. However, um, I wouldn't choose another career. And the beauty of being a PA is that I can be a full-time PA. And if I wanted to do, wanted to do something in fashion, I could always do it. So that concludes this question and answer session. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a comment below and we'll do another one in the future. Otherwise, smash that like and subscribe button and follow Dr. Cellini on Instagram. Thank you love. If you have another question, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. Otherwise, we'll see you on our next video. Hit it. Alrighty. I was even sitting down. <laughs> And take number four, Dr. Cellini's turn. Is it difficult? <laughs> Do it again. All right. <laughs>